Whether you are actively using opiates or know someone who is using, or you work in areas where people are at risk of overdose, it is important to learn how to use an naloxone kit because it can save lives. I'm Mike, your pharmacist. In this video, we will learn when and how to use naloxone kits. Recently, Ontario passed a new legislation that made naloxone kits widely available to the public. Variation of this harm reduction program exists globally. It's actually endorsed by the World Health Organization. Health Canada, in conjunction with the Ministry of Health, are implementing policies, programs, and procedures aimed to decrease the socioeconomic consequences of addiction-related problems. Now, why is this important? Well, here's a graph from the National Institute of Drug Abuse showing the number of deaths from drug overdose. More than 64,000 Americans died from drug overdose in 2016, including illicit drugs and prescription opiates, nearly double in a decade. And this number is still on the rise. Data from the CDC showed that deaths from unintentional injury jumped from 2015 to 2016. In fact, deaths from unintentional injury is now the third leading cause of death behind heart disease and cancer. About 160,000 people died of unintentional injury. It used to be car accidents that was the leading subcategory of unintentional deaths, but that has changed drastically in the past decade. Drug overdose is now the leading subcategory for unintentional deaths causing 64,000 plus deaths in 2016, overtaking diseases like asthma, bronchitis, and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. In Canada, the data is following the same trends, with more than 4,000 Canadians estimated to have died last year from drug overdoses. Now, to put this number in perspective, more Canadians are now dying of overdoses than motor vehicle accidents and homicides combined. Due to this drastic rise in overdose, naloxone no longer requires a prescription to be sold in Ontario pharmacies, if indicated for emergency use for opiate overdose. Now, who can get these naloxone kits? A person who is either currently using opiates or is a past opiate user who is at risk of returning to opiate use. This can be someone who abuses street drugs or prescription drugs. A family member or friend of someone who is at risk of opiate overdose. Now, with this legislation, naloxone kits can only be distributed to those who have received appropriate training. That's why naloxone kits just can't be put outside a hospital or a clinic. Now, how does naloxone work? When someone uses opiates, it saturates the opiate receptor. It gives that euphoric effect, but in high doses, it can also slow breathing to a point where it can be fatal. What naloxone is, it's an opiate antagonist, meaning it knocks off the opiate and takes its place. This allows the patient to regain respiratory effort. Now, the half-life is very short for naloxone, meaning the effect of naloxone wears off very quickly, in about 30 minutes. For this reason, it's very important to call 911 before using a naloxone kit, or else 30 minutes after using naloxone, the patient can fall right back into overdose. The whole purpose of using naloxone is to give time for the ambulance to arrive. Naloxone is a safe drug but it does have some side effects. Reason being, after injecting naloxone, the patient can be put right into withdrawal. And some of these withdrawal symptoms are irritability and anger, sweating, shivering, severe muscle pain, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. It can also cause some rare but serious side effects like seizures, a big drop in blood pressure, which can lead to fainting. It can also increase blood pressure drastically. It can also affect heart rate, causing an arrhythmia. While some of these side effects or withdrawal symptoms may sound scary, it's important to realize that this is only used in an emergency when the patient is unconscious and it's better to do something than nothing. How to assess the signs of an overdose. If someone may not be responding to you when you yell, if their breathing is slower or you hear gargling sounds or they're not breathing at all, if they have cold clammy hands, if their body is limp, if they have bluish lips or nails, and if they have pinpoint pupils. The contents of a naloxone kit are as follows. There's two one mil ampules of naloxone, two one inch syringes. There are two safety ampule opening devices for the ampules. There's one pair of non-latex gloves. There's one rescue breathing barrier and one naloxone identifier card. If you are suspicious of an overdose, such as seeing paraphernalia around, you see shallow breathing, bluish lips, or nails, the first thing you need to do is shake and shout the patient's name. If unresponsive, call 911 and stay on the line with them. It's important to call 911 before injecting naloxone because as mentioned earlier, naloxone only works for about 30 minutes. So if the ambulance doesn't arrive within that 30 minutes, the patient can fall right back into overdose. Now after calling 911, you will break the ampule with the ampule breakers provided in the kit. You'll draw up one mil of naloxone into the syringe and then you inject intramuscularly or into the muscle, either the shoulders or the outer thighs and you can inject it through clothing as long as the clothing is in a jacket or thick clothing. 
And then after that, you're going to do chest compressions. And if you are CPR certified, you can also use rescue breathing. Now, if this is not working within three to five minutes, you can inject another one mil of naloxone into the patient. Now, if you have to leave the person unattended and they're unconscious but breathing, here are some steps to put them in the recovery position before you leave them. Their head should be tilted back slightly to open the airway. You should place their hand under their head for support and bend the knee forward to prevent the body from rolling onto their stomach. Now some tips if they do fall out of overdose after injecting naloxone, you don't want to make them stand because they can fall. You don't put them in the shower because they can drown and make sure you don't give them a stimulant like cocaine or crack. It can actually make things worse for obvious reasons. I'm Mike, your pharmacist. If you found this video informative, please subscribe for more health education videos like this one.